Hey, and welcome to the Carry My Heart podcast. I'm Carrie. You can find me on Instagram and Ravelry at Carrie E. Kogan. And you can also find my blog at carriecogan.blogspot.com. And please go onto Ravelry and join our little group that we have over there. It's just the Carry My Heart podcast group, and we would love to have you. So if you're a new viewer, welcome. I am so glad that you found this podcast. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. It really means a lot to me. So this week, I'm going to do something a little different because I don't really have anything to show you this week. I don't have any new works in progress or any finished objects. And so I won't bore you with the same old, same old. And so this week I'm actually going to do a tag video. I love to watch tag videos and I was thinking about it one day and I was like, you know what? I've never seen a knitting tag or a yarn tag video. So I decided to go ahead and compile some questions of my own. And I would really love if you also answered these questions if you wanted to. And if you do, please let me know so I can go watch your video because I would love to see your answers. So I'm going to go ahead and dive right in. So the first question is, what is your favorite craft using yarn? And for me, that is hands down knitting. I also love to crochet, but knitting is the craft that I learned first. And so I think that's really why it has my heart. Question number two is, what is the first project that you ever made? And for me, that was a tea cozy. I made it out of Knit Picks uh, Comfy Worsted yarn out of their Marlin colorway, which is a really beautiful blue. And I, I loved that yarn. I actually still love Knit Picks um, Comfy, uh, Comfy Worsted. Yeah, it was their Comfy Worsted yarn. Sorry, slightly scatterbrains today. But that tea cozy, I pretty much just made it like a long rectangle because at the time, I had no concept of knitting in the round. The idea of seaming was way over my head. And so I sort of like jerry-rigged it with a button to keep it closed. And that worked for about one use, but then I had no idea that knitting would stretch out. So from then on, it just fell right off of whatever cup I was using. So slightly failed project, but it was definitely a learning experience. Question number three is what is your favorite thing that you've ever made? And for me, that is definitely my Halstead shawl. This is a crochet pattern that is free on Ravelry and I crocheted it using yarn from Mia Bella, which is a yarn store in Highland Park, Illinois, just north of Chicago. And this color is so gorgeous. It's this beautiful off-white blush color and the reason why I love this pattern so much is because of the beautiful border which hopefully you can sort of see but I just I love this shawl so much I wear it all the time and it is so beautiful and it has um, some special importance to me because I actually crocheted this right before David and I went to uh, Door County, Wisconsin last summer. And it was while we were there in Door County that David proposed to me. So this shawl just has really special significance to me. Plus it's beautiful. Question number four, finished object that you received the most compliments on. And for me, that is this hat. So this is the Lotus hat, which is another free pattern on Ravelry. And I knit this using Knit Picks Shine Worsted. And I love this yarn because it gives really beautiful stitch definition. And this pattern is so great because I am not a huge cabling knitter. And so this pattern has sort of like mock cables and it's really, really pretty. And I probably receive the most compliments on this because I wear this hat all the time. So there's definitely a lot of opportunity for it to be complimented, but it always makes me so happy when somebody tells me they love my hat and because I love it too and I worked hard on this hat. This is one of the first hats I ever made and 
since then I've actually done this pattern again because I really enjoyed it. The next question is how old were you when you learned to knit or crochet? And knitting, I technically learned how to cast on and then knit stitch when I was seven or eight years old, but I didn't officially get into knitting until about four years ago. And then crochet, I learned three years ago. Question number six, who taught you? So the person who taught me how to knit when I was so young was actually my sister Colleen. She is five years older than me and she had received some knitting needles and just some acrylic yarn and was learning how to knit from a book and so she also taught me and that is just where it all started I guess and then um, I never never made anything um, obviously they were her knitting needles but when I uh, was in college when I first met David I was telling him that uh, knitting was something that I had tried when I was younger and something that I really wanted to try again and so for our first Valentine's Day together he got me a couple sets of needles and some yarn and I guess that's where it all started and then uh, for crochet nobody taught me I'm self-taught I guess you could say YouTube taught me um, it, because YouTube is just such a great resource question number seven where do you usually buy yarn so I am mostly an online yarn buyer. I mostly buy Knit Picks yarn because I'm a, getting my uh, master's right now, so I'm a poor college student. <laughs> so don't have a huge yarn budget, unfortunately. But you know what? That's okay. I really enjoy Knit Picks yarn because the quality is great, especially for the price. And so mostly Knit Picks. Um, I also... Love to go to some local yarn stores though and just look around and fondle all the yarn and maybe make a purchase from now and then. And then I also obviously get yarn from YarnCon every year. Question number eight, last yarn that you bought. Speaking of YarnCon, so the most recent yarn that I bought is this yarn from Fleur to Fiber. This is the Colorway Nebraska on her Great Lakes DK base, which is 100% merino. And I just am savoring this yarn. I almost don't want to use it because it's so beautiful, but I know I'm going to enjoy knitting with it so much. And this color is not something that I typically gravitate towards, but now that I have it in my stash, I am so glad that I picked it up because it's really soft and the color is just so rich and saturated. Question number nine is, what is your favorite yarn in your stash? And I showed you all this yarn last week actually because I'm working with it right now. But this is Knit Picks Hawthorne Sport in the, um, the Selwood colorway. And I love this yarn, not just because it's really great to work with, but I love the color of it. David bought me this yarn, and as I mentioned last week, uh, he bought me this yarn because he told me that he wanted to buy me yarn that he thought matched my eyes, which is incredibly sappy, and I'm sorry for sharing that story twice, but it was one of the questions, so I had to share my favorite yarn in my stash right now. Question number 10, is there any yarn that you regret buying? And I don't generally regret buying yarn, but this one time I did. So this is Knit Picks Brava Sport, which is yarn that I actually like. In fact, um, this camera, or excuse me, this blanket that you can see off camera was knit with um, Knit Picks Brava yarn. But... The reason why I regretted buying this is because of the color. It was very poorly represented online. Um, online it looked like a, like a soft coral color. In person, it's fluorescent. So this is their seashell colorway, and I've never seen anything this unnaturally colored on the beach. This is no seashell color if you ask me. So 
I really don't know what I'm gonna do with this. I was so disappointed when I opened up the box and saw this because it was not what I was expecting at all. I don't know, maybe a baby blanket or something because this yarn is so soft, but I just, I don't know what to do with it. I have no desire to knit with this color, as sad as that is. Question number 11, is there a favorite yarn that you've ever used? And the answer to that is yes. <laughs> I don't have any of it to show you, unfortunately, because um, I have none left, and what I'm using it for is kind of a secret right now. I cannot show it to you quite yet, but it is from Mirasol Yarns, and it is their Soka Logato um, yarn, which is, um, 60 20 20 merino silk and alpaca so it is so soft and drapey and it's a light fingering i believe and it is just it was heavenly to work with and i really hope i can get my hands on some soon i actually bought it from um, a yarn store in door county when i was there last year with david and um, the yarn store is called spin and I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed walking around that store. Question number 12 is what uh, color yarn are you most likely to buy? And I gravitate towards uh, purples and blues. Purple because it is my favorite color and blue because it's a close second. Um, yeah, there's no other way to say it. Purple and blue are my favorite. Can't get around that. Love to knit everything that's blue and purple, so. Question number 13 is, do you knit for yourself or for other people? And in the past, I've mostly knit for other people. I love to make things for people, just um, shawls or, you know what? I've never made a shawl for someone, so I'm not quite sure why I just said that. Scarves and hats, and I've made quite a few table runners for my parents. And so I love to gift knitted items to people, but recently I have been really getting into knitting for myself. I am all about shawls these days, and it's just been such a joy to take that time and knit for myself. Question number 14. Have you ever spun your own yarn? And the answer to that is yes. I've shown this on the podcast before, but this is the first little hank of yarn that I ever spun up, which I will never use but will cherish forever because I worked really hard to get this. But currently I am spinning with a drop spindle and I'm getting better, I think. Um, my singles are a lot more consistent and I really can't wait to ply what I have on there. So hopefully I will have enough soon, but I'm a little... I'm a little hesitant to start plying because I'm uh, I'm afraid that I'm going to get it in hank form and discover that it's not quite as much yardage as I want. So I think I'm trying to err on the side of having too many, um, too many yards of singles and then just having a lot of yarn. But like I said, I'm just trying to err on the side of too much instead of too little. Question number 15, have you ever dyed your own yarn? And unfortunately, the answer to that is no. I really want to though. Earlier today, actually, I was watching some tutorials on YouTube about acid dyeing. In particular, I was watching Nicole of Hugh, Hugh Loco's um, videos on YouTube, which were incredibly informative and really, really make me want to dye yarn now. I've got a yarn dyeing bug, but I probably don't need any more projects right now, and I'm not even really sure I have the time to be dyeing yarn, or I don't have anything um, to dye yarn at the moment. I don't even have any bare yarn, so I would have to get literally everything, including just like tubs and pots to actually dye the yarn in. So. I think it's something that I want to do, but um, a project that I'll have to save up a little bit of money for just because there's quite, um, quite a few items that I would need to 
start that process. Question number 16 is how big is your stash? And as far as I'm concerned, my stash is pretty small. But a few weekends ago, probably about a month ago, I actually spent a Saturday night and went through all of my stash and documented it all on Ravelry. I know, yes, disclaimer, that is how I spend my Saturday nights. Incredibly exciting life I lead, but it was quite a process. It took quite a while, but I'm really glad that I did it because now I have all of my yarns listed in one place, and so I will never, never forget anything that I have, which, and so hopefully this process will help me start to use up my stash now that I know exactly what I have. But doing that process alerted me to the fact that I have about 75 skeins of yarn, which to some people is not a lot, to some people it's a lot. Um, for me, I guess it's not that much because I thought the number was going to be less, honestly. But I guess, you know, yarn doesn't take up as much space as, as I think it does. So, oh well, <laughs> 75 skeins. I, I can work with that. Question number 17, where do you keep your stash? And unfortunately, I don't really have anywhere to display my stash right now which is probably why I don't think I have that much because it's mostly hidden away. I have it just in a box in my bedroom, which is sad. They wanna see the light of day, but I just don't have the space right now to display them, unfortunately. Say la vie. Question number 18 is probably my favorite. It asks, are you a process knitter or a product knitter? And <clears throat> excuse me, my answer to that has changed a little bit over the last few years. In the past, I would definitely say I was a process knitter. I I still love the process, of, the process of knitting. That has not changed at all. But in the past, I would make something and then not really use it after I made it. But um, these past few months, I've become really more attuned to filling in gaps in my wardrobe and just really savoring the process, but then also the end product and actually using what I've been knitting, which has been really, really satisfying. It makes, um, it makes the process even better because I know that in the end, I'm going to have a beautiful accessory or garment that I'm really going to love and use. So I'm both, I would say. Question number 19, where do you get your inspiration? And I get my inspiration from all over. I get a lot of inspiration from the other podcasters out there who show off these gorgeous pro uh, projects and I'm like, I need to make that. <laughs> so definitely a lot of inspiration from podcasts. I would also say Ravelry, obviously, because Ravelry is such a huge, amazing resource. You can literally find whatever you're looking for. I love Pinterest because I love the layout. It's very visually appealing. And also right now I'm just getting some inspiration from life. Spring is finally slowly coming. It is a gorgeous day today. I wish I was outside right now just taking in this warm beautiful weather. I've got some spring fever like crazy. So I just draw inspiration from everywhere. And question number 20, last but certainly not least, why do you knit or crochet or whatever yarny craft that you do? I knit and crochet because I feel like it, it brings me back to my roots. Um, I love the idea of going back to a craft that's been done for hundreds of years. And it really just, it centers me and grounds me and it makes me feel good about myself because um, I'm doing a process that's been done for so long and reminds me of my ancestors and t makes me think about the family in my life that you know is no longer with um, no longer with us but I can still remember them in these ways and I also love to knit because it 
has made me more aware of the process of making clothes. It has made me more sensitive to how I treat my clothes, whether I knit them or not, and to just really appreciate what I have. So that's why I knit and crochet and why I love handicrafts in general. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed these questions and I really hope you will want to answer them as well because I really am curious what your answers answers to these questions will be. So thank you so much for watching and enjoy your week ahead. Bye.